Da Jia Hao, my name is Garrick, and welcome back to Taiwan Lao Wai. So today is the start of Dragon Boat Festival weekend here in Taiwan. Everybody's going out, racing in big old dragon boats, and if I were smarter, I would have planned a video around that holiday, but I was not smart enough to do that. So instead, we are going to take advantage of this four-day weekend to visit Da Xi Night Market. I've been to Da Xi a few times before, uh, but the way my work schedule has worked out, I have not really gotten a chance to visit the night market yet. So tonight we're going to fix that. We are going to hop on a bus and we are going to go all the way down to Dashi District. See you then. Folks, here we are, Dashi District. So Dashi is on the southern edge of Taiwan, right before it really starts heading into rural mountainous regions. You can actually see up ahead, we are right on the edge of the mountains there. I could walk like maybe 20 minutes and be out of the city. But we're not going into the mountains today. That will be a video for another time. Side note, I just uh, passed by a group of students who were very amused to see a foreigner walking around, so that was pretty fun. Anyway, if you're familiar with Dashi at all, you probably know it best from Dashi Old Street, which is a big old day market that they hold here every... I forget if it's all, the, all throughout the week or every weekend. I'll have to check and I will put that in the editing. Rest assured, we will check out the Old Street Day Market as well. Might be our next video? Uh, don't hold me to that though, we'll have to see. I have been to the Old Street Market a few times and it is pretty darn incredible. So I'm very excited uh, to show that off to you. Tonight though, we are going to check out the Night Market, which I actually have never been to before. So this should be fun. See you then. Alright folks, looks like we've officially reached the entrance to the night market. Not used to them being this wide. Uh, most night markets I've been to are very packed close together, but this is a pretty wide street. Certainly not complaining though, I'm gonna explore and we're gonna see what looks good. Quite sure why there were sexy anime girl figurines <laughs> on the counter of that squid stand, but hey, what's gonna do, right? Okay, popping into an alley real quick because we got our first catch of the night, some fresh boiled shrimp. Look at that. I'm not used to getting like fresh seafood catch at night markets, that's more of a day market thing, but these look great. Uh, as you can see, they've been tossed with all sorts of tasty stuff. Looks like garlic, scallions, a little bit of spicy sauce. So I'm gonna bite into this thing and see how it tastes. Hmm. Well, first I gotta suck the shell, obviously. Ah. That's a bad idea. Thought occurs to me I should probably peel these first. Well, what you gonna do? And of course, you've gotta make sure to suck the heads. It's not a proper shrimp boil if you don't suck the heads. Mmm. Eat your heart out, New Orleans. This is where it's at. God, that is some of the, the, the meatiest shrimp I've ever had. That's like so succulent. And the spices are great too. You get so much flavor from the allium stuff, the, the garlic and scallions. There's like so much unctuous butteriness to it. And that little bit of like spicy powder uh, gives it like the perfect kick. Seriously, never underestimate the power of a good shrimp boil. Mm. Mm. Man, that's good. Okay, it is impossible to film and peel these things at the same time, so I'm just gonna dig in. See you when I'm done. Oh man, that hit the spot. Whew, my belly is stuffed. 
But of course, I'm running on night market hunger levels, which means I'm still hungry for more, more, more. Let's keep looking, shall we? Okay, pop in a squat at a table real quick. I don't think I'm technically supposed to be here because this is for one of the food stalls over there and I'm eating food I bought from a different stall, but we'll see if they kick me out or not. Anyways, we got ourselves a big old fried chicken steak here. Not a chicken fried steak, mind you, that's something different. This is a fat slab of fried chicken topped with scallions, garlic, and a sweet Thai chili sauce. And just look at that thing, it's glistening. It's, it looks so moist. All right, this is also gonna be very unwieldy to eat, but we'll see how it goes. That's really good. Definitely unwieldy to eat with a camera in hand, but that's, that's really good. Mm. What I love about this kind of, of Taiwanese fried chicken is that it's still so moist inside. Like, even when it, it's this thick and breaded this thick, the meat itself is still so tender and it feels like it just came out of the fryer. And as you can see, that sticky sweet Thai chili glaze is very delicious as well. This is just comfort food, really, really satisfying stuff. The one downside is uh, to Taiwanese fried chicken is that there's still a lot of bones in there. Now, this is not like American fried chicken where there's just uh, the one big bone. There's there's quite a bit of like pin bones and stuff still in there, so you have to really work your mouth to get around them. Worth it though, because it's, again, delicious. Mm. All right, I'm once again gonna put the phone down and chow down because I cannot wait anymore. It's a I know it's Japanese. Shoo me. Okay, quick snack break. I got myself some little fried donut-y things. Not quite sure what's in them, but we're gonna find out. Okay, down the hatch, everybody. They're taro balls. They're, they're little fried balls of taro. They're all right. Uh, taro is not my favorite flavor in the world. I find it's more dry than anything, but they're nice. You know, I, I won't say no to, to fried deliciousness of any kind. the end of the market, which means it is officially time for the second leg of this journey. So quick price update. Uh, the boiled shrimp was 200 NTD, which is a bit much, but again, that's what you pay for for fresh seafood. Fried chicken was 100 NTD, those two fried taro balls were 40 NTD altogether. So all in all, I have spent 340 NTD on this market trip. It's definitely a bit much as these things go. Uh, stuff is definitely pricier down in the tourist spots in Dashi than in Upper Taiwan, but it's worth it because it's all delicious. So, you know, splurge every once in a while. And I will have plenty more to show you on that front when we come back in the day and visit Old Street. But that's all the food stuff for tonight. We have something a lot more interesting in store. Stay tuned. Bridge. This thing lights up at night, you can walk across it, it's beautiful. So fun fact, Dashi is sort of built on top of a mountain. You either drive the long road up to get up top, or you walk up these long trails in the side of the mountain, and you walk up these stairs. And then all the way up there somewhere is the whole little community we were just in with the night market and Old Street and that little garden that I will show you more of in the day. And down here, right before us, is the entrance uh, to Dashi Bridge, which I will show you more of in just a moment.
not go in all the way across the bridge because that would take us away from our bus line. So we just stopped at the little plaza in the halfway point and stared out into the abyss. If you're thinking, okay, that's the night. Uh, video must be done, right? No, not yet. There's one more thing that I want to show you. And uh, this one is really special to me, so I hope you enjoy. what kind of history or legend uh, the murals in this tunnel are depicting, but they are extraordinarily beautiful. My ladies, my royalty of indeterminate gender, welcome to Guan Yin Temple. I'm fairly certain we saw a statue of Guan Yin in my last video, uh, the Yongan Fishing Harbor trip. Pretty sure he's a bodhisattva of some kind from Buddhism, not entirely sure. And for those of you with eagle eyes, yes, this is in fact the place where the profile picture on my channel comes from. See these beautiful red lanterns up ahead? Well, they look sort of yellow in the camera light, but I assure you, they are quite red and lovely. It even sounds like they're still doing a little song in there. I can hear instruments playing, so I'll try not to be too, too loud. So one of my first ever sort of excursions when I got to Taiwan was down to Dashi at night, and one of the first ever places I visited was Guanyin Temple at night. You can see these beautiful murals on the walls behind me. Let me get a closer look. Seriously, look at these things. They're beautiful. Now, even the first time I saw them, I was like, whoa. The reason I brought you here tonight is that that first visit to Guanyin Temple resulted in one of the most... What's the word I'm looking for? I guess life-changing experiences I've ever had? So follow me, if you will, on a journey to the ends of the Earth. Yeah, the music's getting a lot louder. It looks like... Some family is playing in their house. I'm gonna try not to disturb them too much. More giant murals. My god, he's huge. Look at him. Not sure uh, what myth this is supposed to be depicting. See a lot of sailboats in the artwork. Maybe it's just the Buddha coming down to like help mankind reach nirvana or something. I, I really do not know enough about Buddhism to get what this painting is sending my way. Also, one of the more interesting bits of culture shock coming to Taiwan, uh, they still use this symbol, uh, which was originally a Buddhist symbol before the Nazis stole it and made it into the swastika. And it's sort of interesting as this capsule of how, I guess, differently, uh, different parts of the world can view different things. Because basically everywhere else, uh, this is wholly a Nazi symbol at this point. You know, nobody uses it for its original purpose. But uh, there's actually quite a few of these uh, all around Taiwan that I've seen, you know, still used for their original purpose, completely divorced from the horrors of Hitler and World War II and all that stuff. I don't know, it's just been a very interesting experience uh, seeing this symbol in its original form instead of what it became. Anyways, we're actually under the bridge uh, the bus drove in on, that's it up there. This is a nice little, like, relaxation nook if you want to take your feet off. But we are actually headed in the other direction. So this is where my story time begins. And hopefully it doesn't get so ridiculously dark that you can't see my face. So, first time I come to Dashi 
It's night, it's actually right around the same time, like 7.30 or so. I'm looking at the bus schedule, and the bus schedule says next bus is gonna be another hour or so, and I'm like, oh shoot, how am I gonna pass all that time? So that's how I got to exploring uh, Guanyin Temple, because the temple is right next to the bus station. And that's how I found this side path, sort of at the base of the temple, going down a few stairs. And with nothing better to do, I decided, okay, now we're right next to the river, let's keep walking and see what happens. So, I started walking. And I kept walking. And what happened next? Well, you will see. So, what happened was, I found this path just to the side of civilization. You know, just a quick staircase right back up there. We're back on the street, but down here, we're on a gravel path. It's running parallel to that huge river we crossed over. So I found this path and I was like, okay, I'll just follow it to the end. And that'll probably be some good exercise. So I kept following this path and you know, I expected it to stop at some point, you know, just sort of run aground against the river and then I'd be like, okay, time to head back. But to my surprise, it just kept going. So I kept walking, and the path kept going. The lights from civilization started peeling further and further away. Before I knew it, uh, I could barely even, you know, hear the cars on the road or see the lights from civilization that weren't like completely over the hill. It is very dark right now. I apologize. This this whole video might just be showing up completely black for you. If that is so, I'm sorry. I promise I will try to make this entertaining. But anyways, uh, the path kept going. You know, I passed by little groves of trees like this, which I hope are showing up. And I just kept on getting further and further into this little tucked away world. Actually, quick break. I don't know if you can see, but something crazy is happening in those clouds up there. There are like lights swooshing around and stuff, and I have no idea what that is. There's like no storm in the air or anything, so like that can't possibly be an aurora, can it? There's like, there's definitely something happening up there. It's like I almost want to say it's like rabbits jumping around. Like, okay, I, I'm actually I'm actually curious now. If, if anybody knows what's going on up there, uh, let me know. I know it's not very clear in this video, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Could be a dragon boat festival thing, like a, a light show in the sky, but it seems pretty high up for that, so I have no clue. But whatever. Anyways, as you can see, things just started getting more and more isolated from people and things and places until I'm like walking through nature basically. You can hear there are like crickets everywhere, you can barely hear the cars, you can like only sorta of see the street lights from up there, just barely. And it, it sort of felt like the opening, the opening scene to Spirited Away, if you've seen that movie, where I'm just heading out of the world I know, like, out of the world of mortals and men, and just into this world of, I don't know, spirits. Point is, I felt like, you know, I was leaving everything I knew behind and stepping out into somewhere that was beyond the reach of anyone on this side to really understand it. And I think isolating myself like this, like heading so far afield from anything familiar, it, it's sort of what really made it sink in that I was here, you know? I had I'd left behind the place I'd lived all my life in, and I'd stepped out into somewhere entirely different and new and strange and unfamiliar, and I had just like crossed into a new state of being. Seriously, what is going on in the sky? I want to know. And like, even this is sort of like that, that same feeling of stepping into the world of the spirits where there are just strange lights in the sky. And it's like, I don't know what's going on. This, this could very well just be magic from another world and I'm gonna be lost forever among the fairies or something. Like, that's the vibe this place gives off. Anyway, the point is, 
going on this journey is what sort of mentally helped me make the switch from like a tourist visiting another country to a person living in a new place just by like leaving everything of my old self behind and coming out here and letting myself embrace the unknown. I know it's probably a bit cringy in its poeticism, but I like it. And this moment, like doing that sort of had such an impact on me that I wrote a song about it, uh, which I will link in uh, the description below. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have a personal channel where I post all my stuff that is not related to Taiwan. Uh, so if you're if you enjoy my personality at all, then that might be fun for you to go and check out. And right now we are at the point where the path itself sort of starts coming undone. There's no more gravel. It's just like dirt and grass. Uh, in case you can't tell from the terrible lighting, we are sort of walking alongside the top of an aqueduct heading down to the river below. It's not the safest trail to take at night, but don't worry, if you see this video, that means I have come back safely, so not to worry. I can actually see the ground fairly well, considering it's so dark. Uh, not sure if you can. Again, sorry for terrible lighting if that is the case, but yeah. This motherfucking light show is still going on. I do not know what to make of this at all. Genuinely, like, I don't even know how well it's showing up on the video, but there is something going on there. So i honestly not sure if those big, like, lights on the side of the bridge were here last time. I think they weren't, because I sort of remember walking this path in even more darkness than this. But, hey, it makes it a little easier to see. You can sort of check out the river here. You can see how big it is. There's something very video gamey about being in these big searchlights. Like, I feel like I'm about to be spotted by the guards and have like tens of hundreds of people coming after me and I have to jump into the river and swim for my life. I won't, obviously, because that would be a terrible idea. But it's nice to dream, you know? We are definitely in damn city at this point. See, even now, I'm sort of getting deja vu, because I'm like, I thought the path stopped before this point. Like, like the first time I came here, I thought the, the ending point where I couldn't go any further was earlier than this, but I guess not. So, who knows? I'm going to keep walking. I, I might very well end up in the spirit world at this point. We'll see. Okay, what do you know? Real, true, actual end of the path. I'm not sure what happened, but I... 100% somehow went further than I did on that initial trip and walked my way right back into civilization. Somehow. So the first time I took that walk, uh, I kept walking until it took me to a point where the path just basically faded into the sheer wall of the dam and I would have to be like stepping on super sharp declining cliffs if I wanted to get any further. And it was like, okay, this is the end for people, no further. But this time, that place did not appear, and I just kept walking, and I walked up a little dirt path, showed up in this grassy spot behind me out of the trees, and I am back on the road, and walking back to the bus station, hoping I get there in time to catch the last bus before the 10 o'clock bus. Uh, which we will see, you know? So how's that for a ghost story? Uh, I can't even find the the end of the trail I found last time because there was more trail than the end! I swear to God, this country really is just a magical place. Like, if there's any place in the world where real magic could actually exist, it's here. It's Taiwan. But anyway, that was uh, a recreation of the walk that changed my life the first month I came to Taiwan. I don't usually go to Dashi at night because there's not much to do there. Uh, the night market is only open on Thursday evening. The rest of the time you want to go for the Old Street Day Market. And, you know, that closes down well before the sun sets. But I was lucky enough uh, to be there at night. And I was lucky enough to have enough time to sort of find that trail into the wilderness. And yeah, that is, I think, the beauty of going to a place you know nothing about 
and just letting yourself explore and see what happens. There are so many wonderful little corners in this country and, and out of the way pockets that I can't possibly have the time to explore all of. But I will do my best because there are few things I love more than discovering something wonderfully entirely new to me. And I could not be happier that you have all decided to join me on those journeys. So, seriously, thank you all if you're watching. I have no idea how long I'll keep up with this channel or how long it's going to last, but for as long as it does, I'm glad I'm sharing it with all of you. That's enough sappiness for tonight. I'm gonna walk back to Guanyin Temple, grab the 9 o'clock bus, and be back sleeping in my bed. So, once again, thank you all so much for joining me at Taiwan Lao Wai. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, smash the bell, share with your friends, all that good stuff, whatever you want. And as always, I will see you next time. Zai Bye-bye.